This episode is brought to you by Schwab Digital and their plug-in Orange Clip. Orange Clip matches the sound of a legendary DAW for modern production. I personally use Orange Clip not only for production, but also in mixing on individual audio tracks or drum buses. Adding harmonic content to the signal through soft clipping or wave shaping, giving me the ability to increase the perceived loudness of a given sound source without sacrificing much headroom. So head on over to schwabdigital.com and check out Orange Clip. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, on to your episode. We're we rolling. Start I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've upgraded my, um, my Pro Tools, and bro, I can't run it in M1. Like, it just well, crashes. Why is that? I don't know. That sounds like a, a weakness. No, no, it's, there's, I, I see. Damn, Damn, I just crapped on my, my whole Did door. You, uh, but it's something with my, like, it's just a few plugins that I feel like I had that are AEX that are causing the issue. Because it's it's right when it's a loading plugin. Are you? Can I tell you something? That happened. What? Can I real tell you, I got to say this. What? Since I got my M1 uh, Mac maybe 2000, like a year ago. Uh -huh. I think it's about, mm -hmm. yeah, about a year ago. And remember, I got my joint maxed out for yes, zero you did. problems. I got hmm. whatever the highest RAM is, like 64. Right. I got everything. But I have this thing where it will, you know, FL will never crash. Yeah. Like it does not crash while you're using it. However, it does. That is a crazy that take. Is, I'm not gonna lie. Not, it does know. stop the cat. I, I, I gotta stop it. Yeah. It'll just start crackling. Yes, you'll never... get the the yeah. atom radiation bomb sound. <laughs> yeah. in, in, in video, but I'll get to that out the It'll, explanation. It, it doesn't. Not on Mac. On Windows, it probably. Crashes. Okay, probably yeah, that yeah, person yeah, probably on Windows. Windows. However, there's this thing where, and I I know it's a plug and it's not FL because mm. certain sessions, if I just close my laptop to sleep. Okay. I'll open it back and it'll work. Other joints, well, I'll open it back. It doesn't freeze. My whole computer will just restart. So I'll open it That's up different. and it sounds like worse. It's though. starting. That's yeah, what that sounds like so. It's really bad. <laughs> That's I'm not crazy. Lie, it's, it's bad, and I know it's not FL because right. I've upgraded FL. Right. It's one of my plugins. It's one of your plugins. It's one of my yeah. plugins. For me too, yeah. it's one of my plugins. And on that note, well, let's start this podcast. Are you, um, wait, hold on. One more question. Are you opening uh, your Pro Tools in Rosetta mode? Yes, yeah, me too. Okay. right now opening yeah, the Rosetta same. straight yeah. up. Yeah, Cause because it's still crazy. It's, still yeah, because it's like I, I want to have that optimized who, kind who, of who, flow, workflow. But like who do we direct? I don't, um, I, all the plugins ain't there yet. Ex Go clip from the beginning was. No, you hear that voice? You hear that oh, voice? I have no issues with that. You hear that, <laughs> you hear that voice? Yeah, I, I do hear a voice. voice. Can, 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 I, can I introduce the podcast? Like, Comedy. and then no, we no, can no, just I'm go just for saying, it. I just hear I know you're like, who's this guy? Yeah. Who's this guy's voice? So <laughs> check this out. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Devon Troy. Welcome to the Audio Nerds Podcast. Podcast for audio nerds like yourself. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, remember one lucky person in the comment section is going to get that VIP Gold Edition Rosetta EQ or compressor. And also become a member of this podcast and you get exclusive ep episodes and access to a bunch of bells and whistles, even money in our store. Yes. My name is Devon Terrell. I am a Pro Tools user. User. To the right of me, my name is LJ. Okay, and I feel like I don't have my superpower with me. And you, usually on episodes like this, I'll have my superpower. Which word is on the street? Change. This guest took his chain. Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. I mean, it's just I what would, I'm hearing. I would never confirm that. You know, that's what I'm hearing in the streets. But it feels like you know Ben Ten when he doesn't have his little watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my name is LJ. I'm an FL user, and I've been messing with Logic. Well, not Logic, but Main Stage. Which is an Apple. It's just all the Logic uh, plugins. You've been messing with it. Hmm. It's it's just all the Logic um, instrument. That's plugins. interesting. Like stock instrument plugins. Not, like Alchemy. What's it's going like, on with you? Really Hold on, that's like a, a development. That's, that's like it's not, it's not. It's I not a DAW. Heard anybody say that? It's in not, my life. So main that's stage, like main stage is basically. It's not a doll. You can't. I think you can record, but it's for live performance. It's just for live performance. Got so you. Stand alone. I use it and I record it into FL with like Alchemy because I love that plugin a lot and oh. all the um all the Logic stock plugins. So it's thirty bucks, bro. Wow, you're cheating. Well, uh, also, your yes, to the uh, to the right of you. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I came with some heat. What you get? What, what's going on? New theme. I'm gonna have to start killing the uh, the acronym names. Is a uh, shout out Johnny Boy. Me and Jonathan came up with a great new nickname for this since they changed up the icon. Shout out Ableton. Y'all released a new update. And uh, live ain't the biggest word on that square no more. So I'm, pr I'm proud to announce that starting today, I'm a part of 12. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all finally got Ableton 12. That may have been the longest beta I've ever, ever seen. seen. Yo, yeah, like, I've been seeing that for like a year. Yeah. Did you? Th I thought it was out already. I bro. thought it was never going to come out. You so you are just finally getting it? Yes. I'm not gonna lie, that's fifth. kind of egregious. And that's kind of like, wild. You wanna be 12, bro? 12. You the cops. All well, right. congratulations. What's your name, by the way? Courtney Taylor. Wow. Shout out to you, Ableton 12. Congratulations. That's really a big deal for you, man. I'm really but happy for you. To the right of me, though. To the right of you. Now, let me say this, right? Um, you know, I was this person pays attention. 
Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to I want to be very clear, like the guest that we have today and we have a very special guest today. Um, someone I'm a fan of someone that a lot of you are fans of and don't even know. Um, Grammy nominated yep. platinum mm -hmm. selling what else? Mm -hmm. mixing ma and mastering engineer what mm -hmm. else? professor. What else? On, Ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 no. plugin developer. <laughs> plugin developer. I was getting there. Hold on. I want to plugin developer, creator of Gold Clip, and also Orange Clip. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Ryan Schwab, man. Make some noise. Let's go, yo. Hey. There you go. Thank y'all for having me. No, course, no problem. Sure. I do want to make it known okay. that the image line goons are outside. That's true. So you, just be prepared. That's I, a fact. I'm not it, saying any words that relate <laughs> to that brand. Don't worry. And look, but but I, I like that you preface it with that. But one thing, the first thing we always ask everyone, Ryan, yeah. is what was your DAW journey? So like, what was the first door you recorded in or used? And then where are you now? And it can go back to if you were on consoles or whatever. Like, yeah. what was the first thing you recorded on? I mean, I think the first thing I recorded Recorded was so it was a Sony DAW. What was it? it was called Acid. Acid. Pro. Acid Pro. Yeah, yeah. Classic. I did like a little beat thing in Acid Pro in like 2003. Right. And it was a mess, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and then I moved over to Logic, and that was like confusing to me, but I loved it for a while. Right. And I was doing more production work at that time. And then I put out a couple of records when I was working in Logic, and. After I put out those records, everybody was like asking me to engineer their work, and then I slowly migrated to Pro Tools, and I've been in Pro Tools. Yeah, ever and, since, man. Yeah, because so most of my man. work is mixing and mastering, and right. mm -hmm. I could use like a mass dedicated mastering DAW, but I don't want to like leave Pro Tools. I want to stay like in dialed eco. in, and right. so right. I just been in Pro Tools. Gotcha, for, gotcha. Yeah. So that's interesting. See, so you you mix and master in Pro Tools. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I do. And stuff Which like that. not a lot of people master in Pro Tools, but it's just like so fast for me, and I have like SoundFlow. Like program stuff, so I, I just like all this stuff is like automated. For gotcha. Me. I can just push a couple buttons and get all these mouse clicks done, and I'm just doing creative decisions. Right mm, from that fast. point. Yeah. Shout out! So, I wanted to shout out uh, Ben Thomas. Yeah. Um, Ooh, Ben Thomas. That's, my uh, guy. that's your guy. That's uh, my guy. You know, he spoke very, very highly. Yes. I know he's listening yeah, uh, right he's... now and stuff like that. So I definitely want to shout out Ben Thomas, and he put us on to the SoundFlow stuff. Yeah. Nice. As yeah. far as like how you guys have the automation set and stuff like that. My uh, first something that I want to ask you, and I'm mm. really like I'm here to nerd out with you, bro. Like I just yeah, want to yeah. let you know, I'm, I'm king nerd. So. Your <laughs> obviously you created Gold Clip. Um, wait, before we get there. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm yeah, not. Wait, 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 I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, I, I just want to make. I just want. I just want people to know. Like, yes. this All is right. the guy um, that created Gold Clip and stuff like that. But it took three years. I can't. I could only imagine. To start, what is your setup right now? Like, what is your current setup? My studio. As far as your studio, like your mm. chain, as far as your mixing and mastering chain. Yeah. Like, what is your chain right now? Your studio. Uh, I mean, I have like it's. Half digital, half analog, so it's a hybrid system. I have Key Audio 3s, uh, speakers, digitally connected to a Trinov, digitally connected to Pro Tools, so it's like a full digital playback system. Like, uh -huh. no, doesn't go to analog until it hits the speakers. Um, and in my mastering chain, it's like, um, let's see, there's a custom EQ made by 51DV Audio, this guy in Berlin. It's an inductor-based EQ. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a at and then I have like a custom mixer that has like a bunch of parallel sends in it, uh -huh. and so I parallel send to like a C two, I parallel send to um, a dangerous audio compressor, mm -hmm. I forget nice. what it's called. Then I have um, the Whitestone P three three one evil. Oh yeah, my god! Just the white one, just no, the white the one, cleaner okay. one. Yeah, I don't use that on all records. It's uh -huh. more for like like band music got not you. as much like rap music or music that has like drum machines in it because it just it's a little too soft gotcha you know I mean? so i don't really like for... putting tubes on uh -huh. like uh music that's you know like electronically produced i like to keep it digital or just like you know right. solid state so, so it's like really really has like that urgency that like got that you. power to it and i feel like tubes and tape and stuff it starts to flatten and soften and, and, soft and, things, and it just right. doesn't have that that nastiness to it. So. I've, I've, oh, I've actually heard you say that you like to run more of mid-range and high high frequency stuff through analog equipment yeah. as opposed to low end. Yeah. So you try to stay away from running low end through analog gear. What's your reasoning for that? Well, like a lot of times when I, this is kind of the start of a gold clip, but when I mix, a lot of things that I would do is I have the, I had this like sick mastering chain that I invested all this money in. So when I would mix, I would just like take 10 or 15 of like the most important tracks in the record right. 
And I would essentially just master them, like run them through the mastering chain, use like really nice EQs, compressors, parallel chains, like all analog, and then print them back in and then use those as a source tracks, right? Right. And meanwhile, I was doing that at <laughs> converters and I would use the soft set on it. And it was, it was like a really like slow process because you're not even mixing, you're spending like four or five hours printing Print tracks right. and then getting it in. And it was just like a lot of work, right? So. I basically, when I'm mixing, I'm printing. I'm still doing that to some degree, but not as, it depends on the style of music. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm printing things through, putting them back in the session, time aligning them, and then just like mixing off those. So it's always like the most important stuff. But I use, I found that like if I'm running like tube stuff on like low end, uh -huh. it's because the, the RMS or the energy is so high on it, the tubes really kind of like impact them. And it right. just doesn't have that like, really, really deep power to me anymore. Right. Gotcha. I mean, obviously not all two gears created equal. So mm -hmm. if you're using like a DW Fern compared to like a, you know, like a Michelangelo or something like that, those right. are two totally different styles of two. But right. I just always found like if I'm mixing digital music, yeah. digital processing sounds better. And gotcha. a lot of people are just like, you know, they live in this analog world that analog's always better. Right. And I disagree. Right. When it comes yeah. to actual like electronic music and stuff, yeah. which I know you did with the Bauer um, yeah. uh, project we, 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 that we, you actually were nominated for a Grammy for. That's we're, right. That's my first. Into, to my to my world right yes, now. Yes. He, he's, <laughs> he's our digital correspondent. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's our okay. digital guy. Digital Coming in from the computers. Right? Uh -huh. I like to play a game. Yeah. So every time we get a guest, we play a game. It's called One Gotta Go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a bunch of things and you just got to pick one. Okay. All right. Let's first go. one, um, Waves versus UAD. Ooh. You can only the have one. The, the plugin or, like, or, or the digital side because I don't got, I had to get rid of my cards so I guess I gotta go I'm going with waves <laughs> got wow you. got you and it's great what any reason I yeah, got right. rid of my cards because offline printing took forever yes mm -hmm. and I just couldn't do it I use the spark stuff now that stuff's mm -hmm. lovely and it right. actually sounds exactly the same and I don't know why they didn't do it earlier they yeah. were just <laughs> trying to sell us stuff absolutely well, I, I hate it every day mm -hmm. where I say just give me the plugins like yeah, yeah. I've been wanting the voice of God plugin yo I love that plugin yeah. I can't have it no because I, got... I need something to break I need like a satellite or something like yeah. that to get, and I'm not looking to get another piece and I'm trying to carry things around exactly I, I seen, carry iLocks around bro I don't want to hear this it's a USB <laughs> stick <laughs> it's literally a USB stick bro <laughs> I had literally I no issue with that like I genuinely refuse to get one man we know like for I've been so adamant like I have the only reason I have iLock Literally, the only reason I got an iLock was because you fucking created a plugin. Because my plugin has an iLock. <laughs> like, yeah, I never got like a Sound taste. Toys plugin. I didn't get any of the old auto tools because I just wanted, I didn't want an iLock. You can, do, still... you can do machine access for a lot of them, like assign the iLock oh, to the machine. That too. Yeah, yeah you, you, don't, you don't need, need the to go a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, you can just make it. I don't it... know, I have the, yeah, the, um, the, the cloud. Right. But yeah. I'm about to say, okay. If I... I'm on a train mixing a record in these rec whack headphones. Some, and that's where you know the dongle comes in. Some you don't even need the internet, though. Some you can just assign right to the computer. To the Machine. So like, oh. yeah, there's like a whole back end. Yeah. So I. It's not that interesting. I'm. It, it's it 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 is it until you're like trying to like develop something. Yeah, yeah. So like freaking I uh I had to make a choice. So there was another. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to tell people. But long story short, just to make it, I was post. I had the choice of having the option for cloud. Yeah. Like when I was doing the plugin, Same. and I told them. I said, I don't even want that. I said, I just want dongle or I want um, on the machine. Yeah, I was like, because I, I don't like I don't like the cloud, man. Like when I'm sometimes when we're here in the middle of a session and we on the cloud yeah. and it just like, hey, no Internet. And it yeah. just like kills everything, yeah. which I, I think have is one crazy. thing on the cloud, which is Pro Tools, because I have like uh -huh. two accounts, like one mm -hmm. for my main computer and one. I have two laptops that I'm bouncing. between. Right. So like if I need to do something quick on a laptop, I can just like pull it off the cloud, do it. And then throw it back to my other studio. Computer. Gotcha. That's, that's pretty convenient. Yeah, wow. that's like the one thing at my crib I have. I have it on two computers, and I, that's the only one thing I have on my cloud because yeah. I'm scared to death to have it anywhere else. Yeah. But good one. So ways for him. Um, okay. Um, only outboard gear for mixing a record, or only uh, plugins. Oh, please, plugins. Yeah, cool. I make plugins, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he made one, man. Shout out from half, you know. Yeah, people people, people like their outboard. He made yeah, one, man. Uh, two A versus seventy six. Mm. Uh, 76. Got okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like 76 is more versatile. Why, why yeah, do you yeah, yeah. pick the 76? Uh, two ways kind of like slow and just, I, I, you know, I'm usually wanting stuff to get more aggressive. And gotcha. Just, okay. okay. Gotcha. That's exactly okay. my 76. reason I'm using 76. That's as a well. fact. I was Blue or Blackie? Probably blue. 
Yeah. Ooh. I, so I, so he made he's forced me to the blue. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as the plug in, Going I'm talking back. about from a plug in yeah. standpoint because the, it felt a little thicker to me. Like I had like a more of a it's thicker, got more harmonic. Saturation yeah, to yeah, it, yeah, yeah. The blacky just felt like it kind of closed things a little. A little tighter, yeah. It's brighter, yeah. but it was clo mm -hmm. a little closed. Yeah, go ahead. We're nerding yeah, out. We good. It's a nerdy podcast. I know. It's the one place on earth we can do this, bro. Um, old auto tune or new auto tune? Ooh. Um, I'm gonna have to say new because my man Jess Jackson. Oh, gosh. let's go! Shout out Jess. <laughs> Jess watches the pod too, man. Shout out yeah. Jess Jackson, man. I yeah. use his presets in uh, EFX. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw it called you on yeah. that. Yeah. That sounded nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. It's super fun. Um, big studios or intimate studios? Intimate studios at home. That's yeah. right. Oh, I yeah. respect Both that. that. I, right. I mean, I've been making records in my bedroom. I got. Platinum records, gold mm -hmm. records, right. Grammys in bedroom. Wow. I never, I never really worked in a real studio. Gosh, wow. what what monitors? Wow. Are you using? The key audio threes. Yep, Gosh, the keys with the trend off. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm actually all interested, digital. It's all crazy. digital until like until it hits the speaker. speakers. Yeah. I was actually really interested in the key threes because I have a um I have a really good friend of mine, Demetrius from um mm -hmm. uh, Million Dollar Snare. Shout out Depth and Demetrius. Oh nice. Yeah. yeah and they were oh yeah you yeah my, mind you he's you, been on Gold Clips. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my next yeah. thing, Depp told me he was like how he had the beta, how you sent it to him, yeah. and kind of like just had it with him. How was that process? And like, like, like for you with Gold Clip, and sorry to skip in and just no, rushing no, the cool. Gold Clip, but how was that process as far as like the beta testing for that? Because I know you sent this around a lot before it came out. Yeah, and it saw a market. So I kind of did beta testing probably wrong for that plugin because I just sent it to like legends, you know, like <laughs> sent it to like all these people that make hit records, and right. their feedback was this is amazing you know like right. their, their feedback was mm -hmm. not hypercritical it was because they were making records with it they loved it right and so it did and it didn't like really get through all the DAWs and all like the permutations of pcs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that stuff and i was just like all right bet so this is cool so i just sent it out to like a bunch of colleagues like people that i right. knew through making records mm -hmm. um because i put it out like three months after i got nominated for a grammy nice. and so i was like in la and i just met all these folks and right. i was like yo i made this plugin da, 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 just like right. hustling <laughs> hustling right. plugins while yep. i was like yeah, slinging this plugins. Grammy wave, you know? Heck yeah. And um, so I just got it, like, I think through that trip to LA, I got it in tons of people's pockets. Right. And um, their feedback was just like really invigorating because they were so hype on it. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so that's kind of how I've been, that's how I've been doing Orange Clip is just se sending like Orange Clip to like Legends before it comes out. Right. And also sending it to some people like on some random PCs and stuff. Yeah, just PCs to see how it is. You got a question? That's a wild yeah, no, I got one more. Um, yeah. My favorite one to ask too. What do you prioritize more, workflow or Sonics? Sonics. <clears throat> workflow mm -hmm. changes all the time. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. If I looked at a session from a year ago, I probably wouldn't even recognize it. Gotcha. I hear you on that yeah, one for probably. sure. Or maybe not a year ago, two years ago. Though. Mm. Gotcha. Does it does it ever blow your mind when you open an old session and you see maybe how simple it may be? Oh, yeah. You're like, holy crap! Like, I, how did I get it like that? Yeah, Where, I did this interview with a radio station in Philly after I got nominated for the Grammy for uh -huh. best sound engineering, and they like wanted to come over and like look at one of my sessions. And I think I just bought a new plugin. I forget what it was. It was. But it was like one new plugin, and right. I used I used one plugin on every track, right. and that was it. I didn't I used like maybe like three plugins in the whole session, and it was just one plugin. It was a uh, Kush Audio. It was like one Kush oh, Audio Kush. plugin on every track, mm -hmm. and I looked it up. I'm like, why did I do this? What is that? But it didn't matter. It just shows you the is. tools don't matter at yeah, all. It's just like sure. you know, I was EQing and compressing with it, and I was using my mind to make right. those decisions, and right. I just chose to use that tool. Right. Nice. Yeah, I, and I never. I didn't. That's when I learned I had that plugin. When wow. I opened it up a year and a half later, I was like, "Oh, I have this plugin." Right, yeah. and you like, and you like, Do I, is it still good? Like, you like, is it still coming up? And it comes yeah. up and stuff like that. And that's, that's why I, I like trying to change my whole thoughts on like plugins and technology. Where I'm not, I'm not like when new things come out, I'm like, that's probably cool right. and that's probably really good. But like all the stuff I have is also really good. Right, and so like I don't really need or lust after a lot of plugins as much as I used to. Right. Um, right. Because I, you know, I find myself like we were saying, like going back to Arvox, which is like twenty five year old code, yeah, and it's like perfect, it still slaps, it's beautiful, right? The waves. tone, right? <laughs> he said waves, you know, the vibes. <laughs> it, it, it invokes a tone. Go ahead. Is your hair matching this new plugin? Yeah, so I got, gray, I got, I got, I dressed up as my plugin for you. Go. I got gray on. I got a little orange on. Heck yeah! Yo, so you know, good. You have me a follow up fashion. Good. Yeah, that was that good. Was that was fine. Fine. That was good. Fine. 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 Thank you for thank you for taking yeah, that out. Thank you. Yeah. Like, oh, and I did gold clip. I like I did my hair gold, and then like some. I was at this club the other night. I was like, you should dye your hair orange. I was like, all right. <laughs> bet, bet, bet. So speaking of Orange Clip, I know people keep hearing us say it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, 
we've had the priv pr uh, privilege through yes. you to test it out and try it out for yeah. ourselves. And I remember, uh, you know, we've had it for a, like a mm -hmm. decent amount of time. And I remember just being around like, you know, some guys that and girls that do it at a high level as far as mixing and stuff. Yeah. And we just constantly keep talking about it. We brought it up. David Young came, we were just talking about the other day. Yeah. Even on our Baines and Tezio episode, we brought it up at the end, if anybody saw that. And yeah. we were like, yo, chill, we don't know if we could talk yeah. about it. But wait, before you say, can you tell everybody what it is? That's what I'm I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm I'm walking them in. I'm gonna walk them in there. No, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm gonna walk into it. So you have this new plugin. Yeah. And it is called or Orange Clip. Yeah. Can you tell everyone what this plugin is uh, before I say sort what this plugin of, is? I can tell you a story about how like the idea sure. started. Yes. So in like 2019 or 18, I was doing a record for Toby Lou. I don't know if Toby Lou is amazing. Yes. Right. For Chicago, he's a legend. He's right. Just Toby brilliant. So dope. And like Toby's like type of artist that like right up until the record release, like 15 minutes before it's dropping, he's like changing stuff, mm. like mixing stuff, trying to add new songs in. And I was mastering it and Richard Furch was mixing it. And I think Rich was busy, like finished some mixes and he had like a track that he did that was like blown out and crazy sounding. Right. And he was like, I got the stems, I got the vocals, but I changed up the vocals. I can't use this version. Can you make it sound like And I was like, I was thinking I'm the best engineer in the world. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely I can. Right. Open up that session, put in Pro Tools, trying all these different clippers, trying all this stuff could not get it to sound like that at all. Right. I was like, I'm failing. Like, I thought I was way better at this. Because, you know, I can usually reverse engineer sure. sound, like mm -hmm. hear something, figure out what, what the components are, make it work. Right. I couldn't hit it. I could not hit it. Right. And so that was like five years ago. And when I started making plugins after I finished Gold Clip, so, like I just like kind of like jokingly thought like, oh, I should make something like that thing that I'm not going to mention. Right. Mm -hmm. And... It seemed like the most ridiculous idea, and all the developers I talked to, they're like, kind of like cross their eyes at me, like, sure. what are you talking about? Right. And I was like, trust me. And so that thing is like a cultural piece. Like, it's like part of so much music, because that's 25, it's again a 25 year old right. thing, right. right? It started in, yes, I think it's this year is 25 years old, yes. and it right. was in the first version. Right. And it's just like such a major part of the sound of electronic music club music, rap music, yep. mm -hmm. so much stuff that's just, you know, FL is, I think it's the most widely used on the world because for sure. it was, for a while, it was cracked like crazy. It was right. so easy to get. Right. So everybody that had a laptop in high school was just had using FL. that thing. Right. And right. everybody was throwing on that SC on it. And, yep. you know, I'm not going to say what it was. I know. <laughs> and, like, know. and so I was <clears throat> mixing records and I work in a lot of, you know, like rap and club music. And I was just like, this is just unfair. Right. <laughs> I'm yeah. sitting here in a I hear you. And so I found my, this developer, Vlad Voya in uh, um, Romania. Uh -huh. And he's just like a math genius. Wow. And he just spent a bunch of time just testing and plotting and just kind of like decoding it. And we thought we had it like three months ago. And I was like, cool, that sounds great. And I'll send it to people and they're like, yeah, this is great. Right. And But it, the harmonics were not right. Some other stuff, the dynamic shape of it was like a little bit off. Right. And I was like, so we were going to call that clean mode and we were going to make a dirty mode. Right. And trying to get closer to the actual. Mm -hmm. And then we eventually just like figured out the trigonomic equation that it was or, or no, it's an exponential equation. And um, we were just like, well, I was like, get rid of clean mode, get rid of all this other it's stuff. This. And just like this, just make it this singular thing. Yeah. And it's perfect. I, so dope. It's exactly the same. When I know, when I used it. Maybe we should mute that I was there. All good. Don't worry about it. We'll review this later. Don't worry. I got you. I got you, Ryan. We won't, we're going to protect Ryan at all times in the comment. Protect Ryan. Everybody in other doors like, we have to protect Ryan. So, yeah. He's got protection of 12. Oh, oh, yeah. 12 is crazy. Yeah, you, can use, you can use it in Ableton 12. Yo, shout out 12. That's crazy. Shout out 12 is crazy. Ableton, what up? Um, you know, when I used it, so I had this complaint, right? For years. Yeah. Where sometimes, even from him, uh, he'll send me his stems, and then I always say, give me your, let me see the rough. Because I know that if, when sometimes when he sends me the stems, perhaps that might not be on, right? Yeah, yeah. And when it's and not, even if it is on, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. But at least I want to say, I just want to have a, a reference because that sound that it has, those harmonics that it mm -hmm. adds is so unique. I, it's it's identifiable. It, it, it's it really totally is. totally identifiable. I 
from Jason Joshua a long time ago, he created like this transformer in his uh, in his DAW in the Pro Tools, where he created like this chain that mimicked the sound of okay. FL. So I took that. I remember him here. Yeah, that, and yeah. Had, I always had an aux that I can blend with like my drum bus to at least give me somewhat of those harmonics. So that was always my like kind of like strategy. The fact that I had like an FL aux like yeah. in my thing, like it was always a nice. thing. So nice. first time cracked it open. And I remember saying to myself, okay, I know my aux, like my kind of like FL aux, like when I get those like really clipped kind of sound of those harmonics. And I put it on for the first time. I threw it on a kick. I remember the first thing I did with the orange cut, put it on the kick. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, there it goes. There. It just there. snaps. You were there. It, it just, snaps. It just, it like it just expands. Blows it's crazy. it up and yeah. snaps. And it's just something about the, it's just something about the harmonics that it's adding is yeah. just so rich, but in like a, a nasty way, but it feels pleasing to my ear. Yeah. So, it's not pretty. It's like it's, it's not. ugly as hell, but it's so way. just perfect. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's nuts. And let me ask you this question: In the plugin, and thank you for putting uh, the oversampling option now Yo, and go click. It actually sounds like so good. It's like, so with oversampling, it sounds way better. It sounds way better. Yeah. Even yeah. Gold Clip. I literally went back to some mixes and like A B. Like, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds so much better. Oh, when we updated Gold Clip with the oversampling, we I like went hard on my developer, and they. He developed this whole other, like, what's it called? Uh, mm. Anti-derivative, anti-aliasing filtering, and this, like, longer downsampling filter, low-pass filter process that right. takes, like, more samples. It's like 64 sample delay added to it. Uh -huh. And he rewrote the whole oversampling thing where it it completely changed the sound of it. Like, when it first came out, it doesn't sound anything like the way it sounds right. now. Which is, you know, I'm crazy. a, you know early, this is my first plugin, yeah, I had no I idea. I was you. just hype, I was like, let's put it out, like. Right. But I was, that, that took me three years to get it to the first version. Almost. Right, By the right. time I like started my initial ideas, just like writing stuff in PowerPoints right. and like Excel wow. sheets to getting it on the street, it was about three years, so. Wow. I don't wanna ask about that same question, but with Gold Clip, okay. what made you go into creating such a plugin like that? Or like what sparked that idea? It was, it was from mixing records, so like I love the soft saturation. Mm -hmm. right which is basically like a wave shaper attached to a, like a converter and with a converter you know that the maximum value is going to be 0, 0.0 dbfs because you can't convert anything louder than that yeah, and so it basically has this um wave shaping thing which basically is like compression without attack and release and so i would go like i would use this one plugin called uh um it's like an ab plugin that did gain matching you metric. put one at the top not yeah mm -hmm. metric yeah metric. The, okay. the metric the uh -huh. meter plugs metric ab yeah i think it's the and metric it's, ab yeah yeah and you put like one at the top one at the bottom and then it like gain matches them so right. you can mm -hmm. like listen to the chain so i'd like go put one at the top one at the bottom i'd send it out to the analog have do all some eq and stuff and then push it right up to full scale so i could access the full knee of the curve uh -huh. print it back in and then have that plug in bring it back down to the track yeah. mixed track volume okay and then i would print that in real time, going through both of those gain management plugins. Oh, wow. And I would do that for like 10, 15 tracks in a mix, like I was saying, and it would take like four hours. And I was like, this, I should be able to get this curve of this Lavery just right. without doing all that. Right. Just having like a, you know, like a threshold ceiling and just all the stuff that Gold Clip has. Right. And so I was just like, I'm gonna make this plugin, I think. Right. And I just like did some like plotted it through it, like sent tones through it and plotted it in Excel and like right. did all this nerd stuff because I was yeah. just like always into like trying to figure out what things were doing. Right. And then I just went online and like, you know, went to friends and peers and were like, do you know anybody that makes plugins? And yeah. I ended up landing on a team to make the plugin. And right. that was like way more difficult and expensive <laughs> yeah. and hard yes. than I ever thought it would be. Yes. <laughs> like I, it was I, the I, hardest, most fun. I almost quit like five times. See? Told you. <laughs> you so you we, mentioned we, Oh, sorry. Yeah, so yeah. we we also have a plug-in. Yeah, and no, it's beautiful. I, I mentioned it, thank yeah. you very much, and I yeah. mention that to them all the time, like how, like I don't think people realize like how difficult that is with the developer mm. failing. Like I, we had one developer before, and then he just disappeared yeah. with the code too. Right, Like of So course, it was like, yeah. oh my God. That it, story happens all the time. It's I crazy. A lot of people if you're just... watching this, I'm, look, I'm still looking for you. <laughs> oh yeah, facts. Like, oh my gosh, man. Well, I got goons out there, man. No, I do want to say, First of all, I think y'all work y'all work together on the low. Because I want I want to I want to say having both plugins in 
uh-huh. on the black and gold mode. Like it just it's like it, oh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's, it's, it's kind of fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like I'm, I'm being a diva with my flex. They just gotta look good. Now. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts, facts. <laughs> I do want to say, um, you mentioned this a couple of times, and I really want to pick your brain on this. Yeah, this reverse engineering thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like that with like mm-hmm. patches. Now I'm not the greatest at creating like patches and like serum yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff, but um. I love that because yeah. I'll hear stuff and I w- would want to like, you know, almost like find it out. Right, and right. I love, I love that um, you have that on the completely opposite side in the yeah. sonic world. Mm-hmm. So I want to know how did that come about and like, what's your process even like, how do you f- dive into that? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, we have like, you know, echoic memory, which is our memory of sound, you know? Mm-hmm. And so you have like active echoic memory and passive echoic memory. And so passive echoic memory is like, fans listening to music right they they think like oh this sounds vintage because it has a plate reverb on it or Mm. oh this sounds old because it's like low pass filtered high pass filter Mm -hmm. band limited type mix you know like a motown type thing whatever Mm -hmm. and so these like echoic tones become assigned to like culture and then they stir up like certain ideas right and Mm -hmm. so then active active echoic memory is like making changes in a mix, doing things and knowing if I add 8K, this is the feeling I get. If I add like a, a spring reverb, this is kind of the temporal feeling I get, whatever. Right. And so, you know, the way that I, I'm always, you know, if I get like a vocal from an artist, this artist bank, he'll send me like a gang of vocals completely dry and then a gang of vocals completely wet mm-hmm. and I'll import all the wet ones and then I'll import the dry one underneath it mm. and I'll be like what's the reverb it's probably three seconds sounds like a plate sounds like it has a pre-delay mm-hmm. sounds like maybe it's distorted widened and then I'll do all those things and I'll be like oh I matched it exactly right, right? and right. so it's like trying to trying to just hear it and attach your echoic memory to physical devices mm-hmm. you know like processors yeah. That and sounds, it's yeah. really like a beautiful process. And most people do it, see the pants, they don't think about it. You know, you ask like really legend engineers, they'll be like, well, you, you know, what are you talking about? Right. But they're, they're doing all of that right. without, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anybody does it yeah, that way, right. but like you're doing, you're, you're going through that process without kind of identifying that process. Right. And that's right. something I used to teach a class at Drexel called uh, listening techniques. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of it was. It was like developing your ear to be able to like decode engineering practices from just uh-huh passive listening to right things. kind of reverse engineering kind yeah. of stuff sound like right. a, yeah. i hope you know like that's on some albert einstein like <laughs> oh, i'll tell you why this I'll guy tell you why it's such it's such a elevated level of even thinking about or approaching audio mm-hmm. because and once again i'm not an engineer so i might just not be listening to it the same but remember we did this thing right mm-hmm. we had your sister come in and um yo keep time with this Remember, oh, like, with the, yeah, and, yeah. See if the, and it's like even normal people they can't. I'm not normal people, but like <laughs> the, the average person. Yeah, and it's just like little things. Like we don't even think about. Like we don't even need a, a metronome. You know what I mean? But right. it's just like stuff like that is yeah. it's, it's a, difficult, yeah. more difficult than people would think. It's a, yeah. it's a weird so, way. The uh, it, it kind of r- r- routes back to how you said it's it's broken down into active and passive. It has to kind of like apply. Like the math has to make sense in your head. Like right. we all have our own ways of how music mathematically makes sense to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other people do just listen to it. It's part yeah. of their lives, but they're like, eh. Like again, ta- asking someone to keep time, it's like, uh-huh. that's kind of like a foreign language. And it's like, for us, it's like, how? Yeah, yeah. Even it's like, like normal. Yeah. So it's like I'm when you're mixing a record, you know, you're doing all these things and you're not really thinking about like the breadth of your knowledge. Like, you know, I've mm-hmm. been making records for 20 years or I've been doing, I've been doing this process for X amount of time. Mm-hmm. Right. And all of those like mistakes and all those feedbacks of people being like, yo, that snare, you know, snare drum sounds like crap or right. the vocal is like muddy or whatever, all that, all that feedback and you correcting those problems all that feedback is like reverberating through into your work and to like the decisions that you're making. But you know, when you're doing it, you're just like, oh, this is like Monday and I'm just doing this thing, you know, like just trying to get through this and finish this record so I can make it sound hot, whatever. But you're not really thinking about the depth of all of the previous knowledge that That's like you've acquired and like right. you know like i always say you get better at making records just by making tons of bad records like making mm-hmm. things that sound terrible and right. then learning how to make them not sound terrible mm-hmm. so like like i mean some people just are great right from the get like ben thomas you know like he was yeah. good like, he just like out from of the here, get, yeah, you know? for sure but like me i made i made so many bad sounding records before i could get a grammy for best engineered record like right. you know like if i listened to a record i did in 2003 i don't I would like to maybe I will listen to it and see what, see what I think, yeah. <laughs> right and, and challenge it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, something I did want to ask you, and we touched on a little earlier, was you know when you brought up the oversampling in the two plugins. Yeah. What I'm I'm interested because when I hit oversampling in a lot of different plugins, 
it's they're not all created equal. No, no. Like mm-hmm. sometimes when I hit oversample in certain plugins, I absolutely loathe. Like I do not yeah. like it. Sometimes it softens my sound. Yep. Some make it sound even smaller. Like some yep. manipulate. When I seen that you had put uh, oversample in your in the in gold clip, the first thing I said was, I'm probably not gonna wind up using it because. I already like how it sounds, and yeah. usually I don't like the sound of oversampling. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, this I definitely need to oversample. But when I oversample on orange and gold, what I noticed was I noticed my sound felt wider. Like yeah. it opened up. And I I I never experienced that with when I usually hit oversample. Usually things kind of just feel a little softer and kind of mushy, like right. my transient. But this one opened up. So when you brought up that you guys like kind of like develop like some new not new but you just rethought oversampling and stuff like that can yeah. you just explain like oversampling um yeah, with plugins I mean, and stuff i am not an expert in it no but problem. like the the developer that coded is just got, he's a brilliant academic uh um, yeah. and he der- derived this anti-derivative anti-aliasing filter technique which mm-hmm. basically you know if you look it, this is one of my problems with a lot of like online st- like you know uh, audio specialists is that if you look at it through like plugin doctor uh-huh. and you like send send tones through it it does some crazy stuff uh-huh. but when you send music through it it does really natural and beautiful things because uh-huh. what plugin doctor does is it sends like a tone from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that's like equal equal amplitude like equal right. loudness but like that's not how that's not how music is music at yeah. 20k is like way down right right and so it so it kind of like um that style of um oversampling is very like musical in the way that it's it's created uh there's like you know really nice filtering that's done that has like really long uh delay time to it so that the filters don't resonate and they're not like right creating artifacts um the over like the oversample a lot of people complain that it didn't have oversampling options and i was just like if people complain i'll be like i bet right and i'm just like do it the most like i told he's an academic i'm like go Dude, go invent something, man. Right. And tell me like a little bit about it. Even when I asked him, I was at this conference, audio developers conference in London last year, and I was mm-hmm. like, yo, like, can you explain to me? He's like, I really don't want to. <laughs> he, like, <laughs> he like didn't really want to like That's fill funny. me in on it because right. it was like his like little bit of research. Right. So you can tell like when I'm talking about it, I'm kind of like quasi sure, quasi mm-hmm. sure is sure. exactly what he did. But right. like to me, when I make plugins or make anything, I just hire, I go find the best people you in the did. world. Yes. And I'm just like, do your thing and I'll listen to it and I'll give you feedback on that. But right, like right. those details in, right. in the weeds, you, right. you can have them. I feel <laughs> so good hearing you say that yeah. because I'll be honest with you. Like, even when I think about it, I'm like, how is that possible to, you know, even know like that deeply as far as coding wise, like how to create yeah. oversampling? Cause like I said, when I heard oversampling on yours for the first time, I really was genuinely impressed with it. Like I was like, yeah. Oh, this is good. Like even just the oversampling. My other thing for you is as far as the plugin, Let's go to Gold Clip right quick. Yeah. When you made that, and I know that you basically uh, went and modeled it off of the Lavery, which is a kind of... I did, but I'm not supposed to say it. Got yeah. you. Well, you modeled it off of something that was very expensive. <laughs> Edit. Yeah. Uh, very expensive. You modeled it off of something uh, that was very uh, expensive. The Gold Knob, right? Yeah. That's yes. on the actual piece. Mm-hmm. What it sounds like to me, and I just want more uh, clarification yeah, on this. Can, yeah. What it sounds like to me is it, it's like it's just a thickening of the sound, right? Like yeah. it kind of feels like the gaps in between that there's like it's quieter, just feels like they just extend a mm-hmm. bit, like everything gets thicker. What is that gold knob actually doing? So it's again because it's a clipper, it knows what the maximum va- like loudness is going to be, like 0.0 dBFS, right? Uh-huh. And so what it's doing is it's if you turn it up to like 6 dB, it's just adding 6 dB of level to the signal, and then it's monitoring the input signal as it approaches that clip ceiling, right? Right. Mm. And so it's doing like a sample by sample analysis. And then like it says, like if the if the loudness is like up here, like add three dB. If it's up here, add two dB. If it's up here, add one dB. And so that that gain logarithmically mm. or exponentially like tapers off right. as it approaches zero. Right. And so uh it gets clipped first, and that's where you set the clipper, and then it goes through that sample by sample gain analysis. So what that what the outcome is is because it's making low level stuff lo- louder uh-huh. and high level stuff you know, unaffected essentially mm-hmm. as it approaches 
0.0, right. it's basically compression without attack and release because mm -hmm. it's doing a sample by sample analysis. So things will sound like they sustain longer. Like you'll hear bass maybe turn up louder, but right. really what it's doing is if the decay of the bass is like this, the decay of the bass is going to be like this. Ah, uh, right. Gotcha. And so, okay. what, and because it, and because it's sample by sample, so it's instantaneous. If there's a snare drum that pops up instantaneously, like a huge spike in the transient, yeah. it's not going to, affect the ascent of that it's not going to affect the transient the attack of it right but as the snare drum like decays off right it is going to affect that and the reverbs all that stuff that kind of goes down it's going to slow the the rate of decay mm, down and gotcha. so that's why things feel inflated right and bigger right and so right. it's like a compressor that is crazy fast and crazy uh crazy fast attack and release right or just zero attack and so release. the decay of sounds are just longer yes. like in a sense yes oh you're, my so you're God. pulling the tail up of sounds mm -hmm. right um, Interesting. so if that's yeah. the case what is the um what is the purpose of the alchemy knob for then mm. the alchemy knob was like an attempt to mimic this other effect and huh. it slowly turned into something else and it's basically like the opposite so as the signal approaches zero it's pushing instead of it pulling up and decay, like reducing the gain, it's pushing gain down, but only in like the Fletcher Munson curve, like uh -huh. from 1K to 5K. Mm. And so what it's doing is as the signal goes up towards zero, it's kind of pushing down by like one DB. Right. And so it's like, that's where our ears, you know, 1K to 5K is where stuff feels harsh or bitter or, right. you yeah. know, loudness is our ears are uh, most sensitive to. Right. And so to me, I don't really use it on mastering as much. Uh -huh. I use it like if you put it on a drum bus and a kick drum hits like right up to it, it'll like push the body of the drums down right. and just kind of like give you the perception of the kick drum getting louder. Getting louder. Right. Uh, so it can, it can be really effective if... As things get louder, they get harsh. You'd yeah. be good at making them less harsh. Right, hmm. and stuff right. like that. To kind of change direction, there's something that I heard you say one time as far as your technique for mixing that really intrigued me and mm -hmm. I wanted to pick your brain on. Um, you mix into amplitude, if that makes any sense. So I've heard you say that basically you keep things all at the same level. So you said, I heard you say, that you basically keep and never just when you start mixing, you're at like 75 to 80 on the SPO music yeah, yeah. DB. And then you have a oh, trim yeah. plug-in on yeah. the end of your mix bus that's plus 6 dB, but you never touch your volume yeah. knob yes. throughout your entire mix I process. Never change the volume. In order to listen loud, you just hit that actual 6 dB yeah. plug-in and then you go back. Right. You you mentioned, and I'm not gonna lie, it opened my mind up to like, oh, I wanna know more about this and yeah. why you do this and why you think it serves you so well to right. do it like that and not touch that volume knob and right. stuff like that. So mixing it, in the amplitude. Yeah, it's called like fixed game monitoring essentially. And I think a lot of times films are mixed in that way where okay. when, when they're, if you're mixing a film, there's one playback level and like you, cause that's how like the Dolby standard is or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure on that, but that's from my knowledge of it, that's how it works. Uh, and so I kind of adapted to that. So I, I monitor at like 82 dB. And the reason I did this is because I always turn it up. Yep. Because I'm dumb. Yeah. I love it when it's loud. You yeah. know, I'm like, this is great. And then like, I can only work for four or six hours a day. Right. And the amount of work I got to do is not four or six hours a day. Right. And so I needed an ability to like work for eight, 10, 12, yeah. 17 hours a day some days, you know. Right. And which is not, not nothing to brag about. It's stupid working that much. But, <laughs> but um, so I wanted like a way to do that. And the only way I could do it is take the control out of my hands. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. so if I have a mastered record that's like, you know, negative eight loops average or whatever, uh -huh. I have the volume, I you know, I have the volume set to 83 dB or whatever in the room. Uh -huh. And then I have going out to my trin off, I have the trin off turned down like, 30 db or something like that and then okay. i have two plugins on the playback channel on pro tools that are like down four and a half db and four and a half db right so gotcha. it's down another nine or ten db or nine db excuse me uh -huh. um and so basically what i'm doing is my volume controller which is digital this if, with analog with an analog controller it might be a little bit problem because if you have it dialed open it'll gonna get some hiss most likely because right. the amps are getting pushed with a lot of uh, just analog signals and it'll just get hissy. Yep. But with a digital, it doesn't matter. So my key three controller is you can just pop it. You know, it's a dial, but you can just, it's mute on off. Um, and so I listen at volume, yeah. 83 dB or silent mute, 
and that's it. And I do the same thing with headphones too. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So and so like yeah. sometimes like if you need to check low end, you know, you need to like just get smacked with it. Right. I'll <laughs> click that one plugin that's four and a half dB louder. Right. Get hit with it for like a little bit and then turn it off. Gotcha. And then go just right to back. Check. Just to check. And then I can on. also like kind of know if a master is loud or quiet just by listening because uh -huh. I don't need to really look at meters anymore because I know the perceived volume of either in my headphones right. or in uh, my room. Right. right? Because right. if it feels really loud and I'm at that fixed gain, I know that it's going to be hitting like negative six loops or something right. like that. Right, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's bussing. So, and so then I can not look at meters and I can just be like, is this good here? Can I push right. it further? You right. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And it's not blowing my head off. That is so interesting. You know I have a question <clears throat> about... Uh -huh. All right, something very important to me, and somebody disrespected me in the comments. People love disrespecting somebody, you in the comments. Somebody called me a Pinterest producer. <laughs> a Pinterest <laughs> producer? What, what does, does that, that even mean? mean? <laughs> because I will literally stop using a plugin because it looks stupid. Oh That's my very God. true. Yeah, you are a Pinterest <laughs> producer. <laughs> I was about to say, you just opened this, up, opened up this mean, podcast and you like your fancy plugins. No, it's not you know? even about fancy. Just if it looks crazy, like if I open up an instrument plugin mm -hmm. and it's just knobs, I don't, ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's hard to look at and if it's okay. hard to look at, I'm not going to use, respectfully. I, I, I get that, care. I get that. You're not, it's, it's a good but point. You're the look of your plugins is amazing. Oh, I say that to say it's a sexy girl. Thank you. All right? So I want to know, <laughs> like, if, yeah, it's a baddie. It's a baddie. <laughs> it's a baddie. Um, it, how important is that when you, when you go into it and how, how is that process? I mean, to me, the the visual design of something I was talking to you about earlier yeah. like completely impacts the way that you use a plugin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I could rearrange Gold Clip in a couple different ways, and people would just use it differently and have different outcomes, right? Mm. And so I spent a lot of time. I read a couple books on like design and just like design thinking and mm. kind of like linearity and and like how like the eye works and how we gravitate gravitate through things or make decisions based off of visual representations. Right, right. Um, but Gold Clip was, I worked with an, an amazing designer, Mike Spillane, who did, who did the interface. And, you know, he, he has like a very design thinking where he's trying to like create like kind of linearity. So if you notice on Gold Clip, like there's a meter over here, there's a meter over here, and then the waveform meter all correlate to each other, right? right. So there's this kind of linear thing going across where you right. can get the information really quickly and get out right? right and so i wanted like one of my favorite comments from jesse ray was jesse ray ernster was that like i was like i asked him how he used it and he's like i open it up for a half a second i change it and i close it i don't even have to look at it because it's so easy and quick right. to understand what's going on shout out jesse by the yeah, way yeah he's really a legend good friend. Uh, and so um you know i try to make things that you you get the information you need right. you don't get any extra information mm -hmm. And that it's it's laid out in a way that the eye can kind of collect that information quickly, right? right? Because a lot of times, a lot of these inf a lot of these plugins and stuff, there's all this like fancy extra stuff to entertain your eye, and like yeah. I could care less. Like I need to make so many records every right. day right. that like I don't want to be distracted by user interfaces yeah. of like right. things that are just telling me useless information. So like right. for it was like in my own like desire to just make shit clean and mm -hmm. make plugins clean and right. quick to use and so when, when we were developing orange clip it first was like really big and it had this like thing at the bottom and then there's all these extra uh things that i paid this coder to develop into it because i was right. trying to expand on the idea right. and then at the end i was like yo cut that out cut that out cut that out get rid of everything right. let's shrink the plugin down keep it simple right and so i paid all this extra money for all this code and i just threw it all away because out of like design you right. know like i care for like the physical design of a right. plugin yeah. um so yeah it's like it's really to me the the way that something lands on your eye mm -hmm. is makes such a big impact on how you make audio decisions right and i want like the best audio decisions to happen and right. so like without the clutter of it yeah let me let me say this or ask you this when when it came to um orange clip and just the layout and stuff like that i liked it because being a gold clip user it looked super familiar yeah, yeah, yeah. so i already felt like i knew like oh oh i already knew where everything was at exactly like, literally exactly. one thing i wanted to ask you about soft clipping yeah. um which sometimes information about soft clipping can be a bit uh daunting and a little bit confusing yeah. What is the process of soft clipping for the most part? Because sure. it's very different from limiting, like yeah. extremely different. What is that process of soft soft clipping so that I can actually, like, I would love for people just to hear that yeah. and stuff like that, like, since I you mean, would know best. Soft clipping is like soft knee compression. 
mm. right? Or hard knee compression, right. right? And so like a soft clipper or a hard clipper is very much the same, except instead of clipping or uh, compression being introduced, distortions being introduced or mm -hmm. clippings being introduced, right? Uh -huh. And so uh, gold clip is a clipper and a wave shaper integrated together. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but then what orange clip is just a wave shaper, but a wave shaper is essentially a clipper. Right. If it's, if the wave shape is hard clip, then it's just clipping. If it's just like a flat line. Right. So, um, you know, so soft clipping is basically like on orange, there's a not a dial that says like 10 dB at the default is negative 4.4. Yes. Right. And so that's the default setting. That's like a very important setting because most people just leave it right there. Yep. And basically what that means is like, there's a clip ceiling, which mm -hmm. is by default 0, 0.0. And so, Negative 4.4 below that zero is when it starts to arc, right? It starts to bend the loudest part on the positive side of the waveform and the bottom side of the waveform. Mm -hmm. That's 4.4 dB. It starts to bend them together and right. push the peaks down. Right. And then that process of pushing peaks down naturally imparts distortion. Gotcha. And that distortion has harmonics, and those set of harmonics are very much identical to the tool that it emulates, which right. are very like culturally important and right. are a part of so much modern music. Right, right. Yeah. I, and I always wanted to bring it up because I remember there was a time where I was talking about uh, saw clipping. It was an early episode and mm -hmm. we talked about saw clipping and I was like, oh, it's like all about the knee, right? In my oh, mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is. It, it really is. A lot of it is the knee, but I think the one part I should have mentioned was the harmonics and the distortion yeah. that mm -hmm. also gets added and stuff like that, which but makes it the knee special. is what's what's like the cause of those harmonics. Mm -hmm. So the right. whole version of, of Orange Clip when we were developing it, we had this whole other knee as a different uh, function that we had that we coded and it was close dynamically, but it wasn't perfectly the same. And right. so because the dynamic shape of the knee wasn't 100% identical, the harmonics were much different. And that's what like caught me. I was like, yo, when I look at the harmonics of the thing we're shooting towards uh -huh. and the harmonics of ours, I'm like, they look way different. And right. it was because the shape of the knee was so different. Right. It wasn't so different, but it was just slightly different. Right. It was just like what a, you noticed. Though. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to whatever old man in the seven in the in the fifties or forties uh -huh. said, "Let's just name it knee." <laughs> Let's make it easy. Knee. Let's make it easy. Oh, Yo. It's, it's, it's cutting off. Let's just call it a Call clipper. it the knee. Okay. It's clipping off. Clipping. Right, let's, let's call, call it a clipper. Okay. You know, can I tell you the worst term in audio <laughs> to me to this day? Right. Master. I'm, I'm interested in that. Okay. That I'm interested in. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm so interested in like that. I was going to say, and we're going to circle back to that. Oh, for sure. I was going to say uh, the term high pass and low pass. I it's so confusing. Oh, oh my I'm not God. Gonna lie. To this I'm day, so to this day I, I have to go by <laughs> I gotta think high pass it. lets the highs through. Yeah. So that highs means the low. Yeah, okay, the cool. highs pass. The highs I'm not going to lie. I just started getting used to them this year and I'm like, I kind of feel cool now. That's what I used to be. I used to be. I used to be like, why don't you call it a high hey, cut and a low cut? I, I still say, oh, high cut, low, low cut. cut. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. It's way easier. Like super like automatic tune. Let's call it. Auto, Auto tune. tune. <laughs> Thank you. The goalpost. So, so why do you think the word master? You know I, hate? I hate bus, and I hate um, bus is hot. bus is fire. I hate sends, but I uh, sends is fire too. I'm not gonna not nah, because you know why? I see where Levens is. I see where Levens is Ox. at. At least with bus. Nah. How? So, so, you know, it's not a bus. Uh, you could call it a wire, a little dongle. And it, and it, and it <laughs> FL. And it still does get a little bit creepier to shout out all our you know old and goaded producers and engineers, but. Mm. We see a lot of videos when they be trying to explain to us and like, when y'all don't know what a bus is, just think about each of your tracks like children going to school and you put them on the bus. Don't that's do that. That's, that's exactly not that's okay. What I mean. Dude, that's that's not okay. No, 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 it's you not. know what I don't like? No, it's not. You know what I don't like personally? What? what? Mm. I don't like attack. <laughs> release. I, like, I like release. Attack. Release. I don't like attack. It could have like been attack. in, it could have been in and out. Why you gotta attack me? You gotta attack me? I like to say leading edge. <laughs> Lenient, you said? Leading edge is usually what I say. Leading, leading edge. edge. Leading that edge. sounds yeah. fire. On our compressor, we say tight. Leading and leaving would have been hard. And open. We say Ooh, tight and leading open. Leading and leaving. Leading, yeah. tight and open. Leading and leaving? Mm hmm That's good. That, that makes sense. I attack. like attack. Dang. Yeah, attack, attack, attack makes sense. It makes sense to it. me. Yeah, like, it's the attack. Attack that, 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 that thing. That thing. <laughs> we don't need to make it anything Decay. more confusing. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> Lead, yeah, it's like, yo, bro, what are we sustain doing? Sustain is the only one that makes sense. Sustain is sustain. Sustain do make sense. Release is good too. I like attack and release. I, I enjoy, like, attack <laughs> and release makes sense. You're used to attack and release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course, you're used to attack, attack and release. Back. So, you know, with the with the master thing, why do you think that word is like 
uh, uh, just not the word. This just has bad historical connotations. I, mean, <laughs> I was about to say. I mean, when you look one. at like old tapes, like we, we had this tape vault at Drexel, which was the Sigma Sound tape archives. It was like 7,000 mm. tapes. Mm. And they all just say like master slave, master slave. And it's just yes. like, yo, this is like, can we come up with a better term than this? Like, you know, that, that changes it's the true. whole meaning of MS, uh, midside compression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Midside is something that, Ooh. well, at least MS, I never even thought about that. But now you put it in my head like, <laughs> damn. Hey, but you know, MS is even kind of wrong too. It should be. Oh uh, wow, that is true. I never thought about that. It should be what some difference is really what it is. With mid side, yeah. can I? You know something mm. that, re- and this is, I'm actually embarrassed to admit this. Yeah. Recently, on my, I have a knee protocol master bus processor, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And for years, I've been saying, "Dang, I really, I'm really fighting to find like a plugin that has a good MS codec mm-hmm. that I like that doesn't mm-hmm. that doesn't feel like it's causing like a weird phaziness or because sometimes I'll throw up side information on a yeah. plugin and I'll be like it, my middle like just it's gets washed weird. Yeah. it's weird yeah so for, especially if you use like a Q that's really tight like if you're doing MS processing you use a Q that's really tight because right. there's all this like filtering issues that happen and right. phase issues that happen with tight Q and then right. when you do the phase you know reassemble the MS uh, to stereo all that phase smearing then kind of gets trickled into the to the stereo. Yes. And so I I you know a lot of people are like, you gotta put MS in gold clip. And I'm like, no. You I just don't, don't even want to I don't, I don't use it and right. I don't want it. And right. so it's my plugin. So no. yeah. He's just my plugin. So that. no, no, no. Felt that. Thank you for bringing it up. Because yeah. I, I noticed that with a lot of plugins that I try to I've been I was on a hunt for years for like a plugin that does like MS really well. Like yeah. say for instance I'm like I just want more side information. So yeah, I throw yeah. it up and I'm like there's some more side. My middle is still clear and has the fidelity. I recently was on my knee portico master bus. Yeah. And for years, I didn't realize that there's an option inside uh, on the SFE side that if you hit it, it then turns the channel A and channel B into mid and side. Because nice. they named it something weird. They named it, not weird, but they named it, not mid side, it's depth and width. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought that- so weird. And I want them to change it because literally, literally I just found this out last week and I'm embarrassed. Dude. <laughs> I literally put the mindset of this is a midside a midside compressor and stuff like that. Yeah. Hit it in, and I was just like, there it goes. And right. it was so much better than like in any box, plugin. Yeah. yeah, as opposed that I was using this stuff like yeah, that. In the box, I really the only midside I do when I'm mastering is I use this orange, uh, matte orange, M A A T orange. It's it's a linear phase EQ that mm-hmm. kind of deals with the pre ringing issue it, oh. by, with like phase inversion yes. of like getting rid of the pre, the pre ringing issue. So it's like a really really clean pristine uh, EQ. And so what I do is I like basically like with a plugin before it like solo the mid uh-huh. and it has like this nice um, kind of um, heat map on it. And so you can see where like musical resonances are. Uh-huh. And so I'll like find like if the the records in like a, you'll like see resonance at like a 440. So I'll like dig a hole in the mid, maybe a little bit to like get mm-hmm. that out. And then I'll solo the sides and I'll gain them up like eight DB so that they'll, cause sides are generally down pretty low. Right. So those will come up and they'll show up on the heat map and I'll see like, again, some of the chords and I can like dig out some of the musical resonances. And then that process of like pulling the mids between like 200 and 1K down, uh-huh. it kind of makes the record feel brighter right. in the end. And it's just like little like one DB tucks like around the musical resonances of the right. record. Right, within the mid codec in yeah. the, so- yeah, the, the sides. Yeah, mids and the sides, yeah. Oh, and it kind of just like, it's, kinda has, yeah, it's yeah, subtle, yeah. but it just like opens the record up in a way that's related to the musical information rather right. than like the the resonances of the recording or something like that. What is the name of that plugin again? Matt Orange. It's like six hundred bucks. <laughs> nice. It it should yeah. be because what you're explaining it makes me think of that. You know what you made me think about with the pre ringing issue and stuff. Yeah. You made me think about the Fab Filter Pro Q3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So something hmm. a lot of people don't. I don't think a lot of people realize is sometimes they throw in a Pro Q3 and mm-hmm. it's in zero latency and boom, you're just EQing. Yeah. But there's a huge difference when you cycle between natural phase and yeah. linear phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I tend to like really just fight with it sometime. Like yeah. lately I've been like, which one sounds better? Like one of them, linear phase on my If like I do end. things in parallel, I'll use it in linear, but other gotcha. times I try to use minimal. And uh, I notice on linear, linear phase parallel sounds better. Like the timing yeah. just feels a lot better. Yeah. Or else it'll get phasey. Right. So I know, I see like, I've never had this, I genuinely never had this conversation with well, someone. So yeah. I just wanted, no, no, well, I know, but <laughs> it's nice to know because. No, this is where you should have the conversation. You're right, you're right. <laughs> you're not, who you else gonna bring this information out but us? That's you a know, fact. I, I, have a, I have a question. Okay. I, get, I moved away from Fab Filter Pro Q3 like five, four years ago. And I went to Equilibrium, which was uh-huh. to me sounds way, way better. Okay. Interface is like not where it's at compared to the Pro Q3 is so beautiful just because of the interface. Sure. Like it is the most 
well-designed interface of all plugins. For sure. Mm -hmm. Like just the, the mouse moves and everything. Uh -huh. But to me, it does not sound good. Wow. It sounds grainy. It, things start to sound smaller. It's just so easy and wonderful to use. So I use Equilibrium forever. Okay. Uh -huh. and But the interface is just like, it's chaos. You you open like the settings page and it's like 45 pages long. You can oh, change wow. everything. It's crazy. Right. So then I just, I recently I just moved to Kirchhoff like two years ago. Mm. I started using Kirchhoff. And it has like all uh -huh. the kind of beauty of the design of Pro Q3, not right. quite as nice, but right. it has the sound of equilibrium as well. And it just, right. it just sounds better. The dynamic sections in it is way more detailed. Like it actually mm. has attack and release rather mm -hmm. than Pro Q3. It's just like chaotic. It just yeah. like jumps around like a madman. Like right. I can't, I can't really know what that thing's doing. In my opinion, I just... I, I'm, ex I'm so glad to talk to someone that masters right yeah. like well i know we hate yeah. that word but yeah. that, that's a mastering engineer as well because obviously you listen to music and when you're mastering records it's a very critical kind of ear and decision you have to make so i thought because i don't have the greatest room in the world that i was bugging a little bit i was like man sometimes this fab filter pro q3 just makes a uh, vocal or anything just sound really small. Yeah. Like it kind of like some we something really weird happens mm -hmm. from time to time. Smeary. Smeary just smears yeah. things a bit. Even when I try to do it on kicks, especially that's when I notice like when I'm trying to just get resin out of a kick, I'm like, what's happening? Why that transient? Yeah. Like something's just getting weird. Or so you it's try just that high pass filter or low cut at oh. 96 dB. Oh that my. thing goes, it sounds crazy. It gets right. like like it adds like 4K to the signal if you like high pass filter at like 40 hertz because right. it just has so much phase smearing from right. that steep of a curve. I mean, it's, wow. it's cool. It's a cool effect, but... But nonetheless, yeah, it's not it's what just, I want. Yeah. I, I've been doing low shelves instead of cuts lately yeah. on that EQ just Definitely. to save myself from phase and stuff. Yeah, so that's yeah. interesting. I'm just... All I'm saying yeah. is I've had this suspicion for a while, but I'm scared yeah. to death yeah. to like, hey, am I crazy? Are people like, no, you're bugging? Because it's it's a now, it's we, a. We gotta be done with now that. I'm gonna say, with all that said, you can make a thousand hits with Pro Q3, and yeah, there's nothing course. wrong with it. Like, I'm not I'm not yeah. here like being like you you know you yeah. can't make records on that thing. Like, yeah. I, all these things are such in the weeds of nuance. Like, it none is. of it matters. Right. But like for me. I'm always, you know, like, what is the thing that is, like, a little bit better? And I'll always gravitate towards that, right. like, from a sonic perspective. Right. If the interface isn't quite as good, I'll be like, I'll settle. You know, I'll be like, all right, right that's cool. Like, it just, I feel more confident using it, making decisions with it. So, Right. Yeah. Man, what, I, I've been looking at that Kirkhoff. That's why I'm like, yeah. oh, because I've seen everybody kind of that don't use Pro Q3, they use the Kirkhoff instead. And it has, yeah. seems like it has all the bells and whistles. So It does, yeah. I'm, nice. Yeah. If you tell me you like the sound of it better, that's what I've I been do. looking for. Just like a Swift Army Nice uh, plug-in. That yeah. feels that way and stuff yeah. like that. But what you said is leading to my new, my I can't even say New Year's resolution <laughs> because we have we're, we're done here. In the next, it's we're over. In the next quarter. However, <laughs> people are not going new, to the gym my new no podcast more. Podcast re resolution. <laughs> I'm done saying uh huh when I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. In a sense, Ooh. in a sense, uh huh. I've been know. a produ I've been using FL Studio for I think this yeah this year is ten years. Wow! Right? Congratulations. Hey man, you know. I wonder if Ryan knows how old you are. I think that would be hilarious. It's, it's, it's not yeah. this, yeah. You said hey, not this one. However, I do want to let this off, right? Okay. In Ooh. FL, they have this damn on every screen. On Edison, when you open up, it's there. On a bunch of plugins. What the hell is the point of the heat map? Please explain it to me. You talking about the heat map in, in your, in the your, heat, like, your that EQ? That little view. Yeah, not even in the EQ, like... There's a view on FL. one that it goes goes up like a like a yeah, like kind of yeah, and it's just something. a bunch of like colors and shit. And I yeah. don't get it. It's hmm. I there was a heat map in the DMG plugin, and I was always just like, "This is I don't, what am I what am I doing with this thing?" It's stupid. Uh, same, but like yeah, I when I started to like so like for some reason the heat map in Matt uh, Orange EQ is actually like done pretty well, hmm. and you can like kind of tune it so that it like is gain stage because if you have the gain stage wrong the whole thing will just turn red or whatever color right, right? right. And so you have to like threshold it so that like it kind of is in between loudness and quiet parts that you can see where resonances are mm -hmm. and so if like you had a snare drum on there and there's a big resonance in the snare drum it would just show like a red line at yeah. that frequency right uh -huh. you know what so, yeah. so it can be yeah. useful for like if you're listening looking at a whole mix uh -huh. you can see where there's like if you solo the sides you're going to get chords from yeah. a, whatever the main instrument is right. and you can see where the musical resonances are like where gotcha. the um like i'm usually just using that plug-in in the mid-range like 
100 to like 2k or something like that to find like resonant frequencies within yeah. it and is that more or less like on your mix bus you'd say like just to say okay final little cleanups like just yeah. moving things out the way yeah okay, i'm cool. mastering and mix it's such a long delay plugin that you can't really mix through it it's like right it's gotcha. like a lot of samples so i don't right really, so you just and it's cpu that. heavy like crazy too, okay so. So, so it's like a final like a mix bus cleaner like yeah, cleaner upper yeah. kind of thing so matt orange i'm on that plugin. this kind of this kind of brings me to my one of my favorite segments okay uh, you know Whenever we have a plugin developer, mm -hmm. this is the segment where I pitch you ideas, man. Nah, let's go. Bro. Let's do oh it, man. Oh, my God. I get some I crazy to... ideas in the I can't the imagine. Email, from you, bro. Oh I'm so scared what he's about to throw at you. This one's off the top, you. too. This was, I didn't even plan this Perfect. One. <laughs> even top, better. You should call this plugin <laughs> Platinum Map, right? Peep <laughs> Game. It's a heat map. It ain't no heat map. It's an AI <laughs> heat map. It's going to map out. It's AI. It listens to your track. It's going to yeah. map out whether your track is heat or not. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm all, all right. right Think about that. Right. Now, B, here's 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 the thing. All right. Okay. So it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of heartbreaking for me, right? Because okay. the SC has been something I've been wanting to like gatekeep. Yeah. But there's something I think if you're giving and I love that you're giving access to the world because I didn't yes. know Gold Clip was a um flip. Yeah. Another story. Oh yeah. So I think I got I got something you should yeah, flip, I just right? Be stealing. I'm not gonna well I'm not saying no, this is this is we're giving the, the, the streets what they need, right? That's a fact. Here's a plug-in idea. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna say what plug-in to flip. Okay. But I think you should call it the sound goldizer. Oh I my god. Say, I knew where he was going with no, this. Yo, can I be honest? I I don't know what that plugin sounds like in FL, <laughs> but I'm so interested. Because I, I got a bad feeling that I might like it. I don't I know that plugin. What is oh, it? it is a legendary the sound good eyes. It is the yeah. original oh, the sound good eyes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the original guard particle. I'm out on sound eyedizer. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add on to his point real quick because what? I'm not gonna lie, you know me with uh, with my little lo-fi mixing effects and stuff, Decimal Morton stuff. One mm -hmm. joint I would I would That's love to see them team up and do. Mm -hmm. Just saying, don't steal this name. We put it on wax here first. The uh, orange hate filter. That'd be. Oh. That'd be fire. Because don't do it. Don't do it. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. No, because we have a we have a love filter. Love the free love filter. Wow, that's honestly what it is. No, that joint's pretty fire. It's building in. It's building in automation into a filter. So it's like just do the extra work, bro. Nah, bro. Y'all were nice. Y'all were dope. We, we, Not well, FL telling me to do the extra work. Well, Damn. I'm very happy because right now I have been able to retire my... Uh, Pro Tools? My transform... My Pro Tools? What are you, nuts? Oh, man. My transformer that I've made to when he sends me stems and I'm like, yo, bro, can you, did you take that thing off? Because it sounds way different. Yeah, yeah. I was very... Like I told you, that last mix, I told you I was really proud of myself because I literally reverse engineered like that sound. Shout out yeah. to it. Can, I, can we say I that? I think story? in the next version, I'm going to try to put a side chain in it so you can... Like oh, group all the channels together, right. and then like when you print the stems, it'll sound exactly like it. Can, can I? You know, it's something funny. I was talking to someone with just in, for at most reasons, mm -hmm. and I remember, um, you know, I had a good friend of mine. He was like, "Yo, I want to, I want to let me mix your stuff in Atmos. I want to let so you can, you know, yeah. I just want to give you an idea about it." I said, "Cool, yeah. try it out." So then I went to print everything. I was like, "Cool, I'm going to send him stems." He's like, "Send me stems, everything." And so I said to him, "I didn't even print it. I thought to myself, I said, wait a minute, if I solo all my snare and stuff.'" I'm going through saturation, parallel saturation yeah. there, a bust there. I was like, oh, no. It's, nothing's going to sound the same. Nothing. And, I'm, and then I told him, I said, yeah, but the way it hits the bus compressor of the drum bus is now it's different, yeah. too. Yeah. So what I was thinking was, and somebody had put me onto it, I think, I feel like, I don't know if Ben put me onto it, but is the sidechain method of just yeah. sidechain, making sure that you're still getting all of those signals reacting as far as the, the plugin is concerned, direction. but yeah. you, I can solo everything one by one. That was my issue with Atmos. Yeah. That's why I never like because I was like, I can't send you stems. It's not going to be my mix. Yeah, like, it's at not going to be anything like it. Yeah, yeah, and that's the biggest problem with Atmos is like you mix the record or master the record right up until like a week before it's being released, and the artist is like shooting videos and doing some other stuff. Right. And that Atmos mixer gets all these stems that are like not sonically the same, and right. he, yeah. all they're trying to do is just recreate the stereo mix and in like a more dynamic way. Right. And it's difficult. Um, but yeah, like there's not, you know, you can do the side chain method where like, if you have like a mixed bus compressor, you bypass everything up until the, or no, you bypass everything after the mixed bus compressor and the mixed bus compressor, you print that, right. put it on stereo track, side chain it back to the mixed bus compressor. Right. So it's doing the gain reduction off that mix. And then you send everything through it, but there aren't a lot of distortion plugins or clipper plugins that have side chaining because right. 
it's a little bit confusing because it's taking the dynamic information and applying distortion on the source track. Right, so right. Bit, so how it's like, how do I do an individual distortion to that with yeah. the reaction? I need those harmonics in order to. Yeah, right. it's that, and that's why, yeah. dude. I, like, but I think I'm gonna. Just, I'm gonna. I talked to my developer and he was like, "Yeah, I think we could do that." So okay. I think like in a in a future version, I'm gonna put a side chain on it so you could just like take all like the whole mix right. and just send mm -hmm. it back to all the individuals mm -hmm. right. and then print through and your stem should be right because that thing is on my mix bus like yeah. I, the soft clip the gold clip is on my mix bus mm -hmm. like yeah, i yeah. do it just I, man i keep it at a nice little place and i'll be like and go i push yeah. right into that thing mix wise and, yeah. and i just feel it it's getting like louder. subtle it's like invisible but like completely visible yeah mm -hmm. right? you yeah, can still yeah. hear it but right. like it's very subtle. Yeah. Sometimes when I, I put it out, I was worried. I was like, nobody's gonna even hear this thing. Everyone's gonna be like, why are you? What does this thing do? Right. Because I and then I put it out, and everyone's like, this thing is so. Because the original version was like pretty crunchy. Uh huh. They were like, this thing's so crunchy. You're like this is not a mastering tool. I was like, well, leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah. I, mean, I have the master records with, but I don't know what you're talking about. Right, you was like, it sounds great to me. So I just, mix into it you now. Just gave me, you just put this in my head, hmm. and once again, I could sound so stupid right now, so I'm just prefacing this. Perfect place. For the comments, just take it easy on me. I'm not an engineer. Hmm. However, I wonder, right, and it just gave me a crazy stupid idea. Okay. I wonder why there hasn't been like this AI at most, like where you can import the mixed stems. Mm -hmm. But then, right, to hear me out, this is the innovation part. Okay. You get this MIDI joystick, right? <laughs> Press record, pick what stem you want to do, and then you can, like, move it around like that Atmos <laughs> shit. And a lot of that it. Atmos mixes aren't even moving anymore. A lot of them are just yeah, static. Because yeah. 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 like the... they realize, they're like, wait, this is dumb. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> We're just having fun. It's you know like... that, in fact, <laughs> yeah. you know what it reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Back in the day when they started to create stereo recordings, yes. yeah, yeah. how the old big... Ray Charles records, his vocals is in the right speaker right, and then right, the piano's right, right. in the left. Yeah. It's like, it's literally that. Or like, when you I buy a like... new plug and you just overuse it. You know, yeah. people yeah. got yeah. Atmos, they're like, oh, we're oh. going to swim. We're going to swim. Vocals swimming already. I remember with so stagnant, first, just opening yeah. up the stereo. That's becoming the new standard. Just a lot of people just put them in the stereo field, putting reverbs up top and like spreading stuff a little bit out to the sides. Like, right. Which is, I don't know. Yeah, it's like uh, how we always say people, most, but... yeah, people just engineer he for engineers too. or people produce for producers. It's different because when we, the first year we went to NAM and we was in all them Atmos rooms. And... Oh, yeah. Everything's just it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It was like, wow, this is fun. You if you know? it's a good to... show, right? It's it is. It's <laughs> that's literally what it is. It is. Yeah. Because, and I feel like it's just it's once again mixing for engineers, or may maybe it's for like people thought it would be. I think the best use for Atmos mm -hmm. would be how Jay Z had his museum, or Alicia has her museum right now. Uh huh. Just an immersive room, right? Because Alicia won the Grammy for what? For Diary of Alicia Keys. Best immersive audio experience. Oh, experience. so old albums so are starting to get. That old album mm. was eligible because of the new Atmos thing, and she ended up winning. Uh, wow! So she won a Grammy imagine, for the Atmos. Imagine being a producer on that, and I'm like, waking up like, oh, you, I, I want a Grammy grand. for. <laughs> Wait, what? Immersive. I don't even do music anymore. <laughs> I just want a Grammy. But, that's awesome. See, yes. see, so that's awesome. And you know, the funny what you mentioned as far as Atmos and stuff like that. For me, I'm still needing convincing in a sense of. It's usability yeah. as far as the normal yeah. consumer. Because yeah. I'll be honest with you, when I put on my headphones and we get like that kind of like pseudo kind of like, uh, you know, uh, I click that spatial kind of thing. So, so I, fast. I don't I enjoy it. Like, yeah. it's not something I just want to hear, yeah. right? I don't enjoy it. You yeah. know, it's not like something that like I put it on and I'm like, even on Netflix. Whoa, like, even it can when be it's frustrating on as a mix engineer, too. I mean, I've, I've mixed records and then sent stems out and they've, Release, you know, did the Atmos and didn't send it back to me to check out. And on release day, I was like, "Oh, cool! I'm gonna go listen to it." And I had Apple Music at the time, and I, I was like, "Why? Wow, it sounded like a big piece of plastic." I was like, "What?" Because it? it had all those early reflections in it. Yes. And I was just like, "What is this?" And so, right. like, I I don't know. I, it, we spend so much time making one version of music, mm -hmm. and then the last like four days before we put that music out, we make like a whole other version. Right. Yeah. It just I seems like chaotic. Right. Like right. until we start making music. For Atmos from the beginning, right? Yes. Right. You know what will ruin Atmos? What I think will ruin Atmos? What? What tried to ruin mastering? AI? Yes. Like, like hmm. a lander or a ozone with like a one click button master and it's Atmos, but a one click Atmos. I think uh, what was that distro company that was doing that for a little bit? I think. Oh my god, they yeah. were just like, I don't, I don't want to. We'll make yeah. your stereo file app. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, we'll that's wild. See, to me, stuff, but my fire. thing is with that is just that that's why Atmos has been like. 
for me, I've just been thinking to myself, and we've been talking about it, but I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm starting to lean more I towards told, what you've been saying. I've been telling y'all, man, one of these days we have to have the conversation. Because the only place where I can see it being like a normal thing in everyday life is a car. But yeah. even with a car, it's you're not if in like I'm a drive, still yeah, If I'm driving like, still and my vocals is in the back seat, I'm going to be pissed. It's <laughs> not really like in a sweet spot. So for me, it's just like, okay, in order to, I thought I about have, it. I said, in order to enjoy this m music, you're telling me that I have to literally sit, that you have to person be, has to you sit have to be in, in a certain, certain spot. spot. You know what it would, have to be a specific it would work on? on? Yeah. I would like at most less in music and more in a, like a podcast. Yeah. Like imagine if for like, like a car books on tape, hard. podcast. There's okay. Like an audio There's plenty book. of yeah. space for yeah. it to be very useful. Right. I just don't think right now it's very useful for music. For no. But, and that's like a very controversial opinion. It is. I Because I, I started way. building my Atmos room. I cleared out this room. I bought like, well, I was like buying single speakers to like figure out. Right. That single speaker is still sitting on the floor. Just, <laughs> just, like, just right, chilling. Let's, I walk yeah. past it every day I go to the studio. I'm like, fuck, I ain't, I ain't no Atmos. Even, even if yeah. we think back, when surround sound was just a big thing in home theaters it's and actual movie theaters, yeah. it never translated to audio. No. As far as music? Yeah, music. Yeah, I know. But yeah. surround, but I remember Dre, Dr. Dre did something in surround sound, like yeah. he mixed an album or something there were like that. But that tried, that tried but once things. again, it was a very niche kind of thing. And it was, we were having that, thing, it slapped it, it, that everybody had a surround sound system back in the day. It, st it still helped inform music after a certain point in time, because then you get to the mid to late 2010s, and then they upgrade to what uh, 7.1 or whatever it was called. Oh yeah, and a lot of movies like you could yeah. find the stems, the multi tracks online, right. and people were like, oh, I could just. Make this, 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 that, add that sample to my song, do this with that. Right. Like, it, cool stuff. There might be something, there might be a, a, a reason for it to, or like something it'll add back uh -huh. to like producers and engineers uh -huh. in the long run. Uh -huh. But no, I agree with you guys. Like, I don't think it's like, just for listening to commercial music, it's like, yeah. I don't wanna. Something's gonna wanna have use this to, for. something's gonna have to like, be in, in be yeah. created in order for it to, for me personally, to like, have that make most, sense. Maybe, just like, for my mom. It's I'm gotta make sense. How is my mom? Does my mom care? You know is what I'm sense? like you trying know, to kind of figure out. Even this, I don't even think it makes sense. But if it was a maybe like certain like if if boiler room right, mm -hmm. like there was a big New York club where it was uh -huh. Atmos and maybe the DJs could fire DJ and Atmos. But even then, it's like most right. clubs are like mono because they're just trying to make it the same everywhere. You know, yeah. so everybody yeah. gets hit too, the same way. Yeah. So, it's like, so hey man, and um, so so just to and to wrap yeah. things up, um, for me, you know, obviously with the Atmos conversation, which I was glad we kind of just touched on this stuff like that, just having someone of your caliber, just kind of like, hey, like, are we crazy? But I enjoy the experience. Like, nonetheless, like, yeah, yeah, when I hear a good Atmos mix... There's some great Atmos records. For sure. I mean, like, mind anti atmos but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, um, but I'm just, like, curious to see where it, it, where it, where it leads. I want it yeah. to win, you yeah. know? i just curious to see, like, where it leads. Right now, I don't... I'm kind of like, where you going? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm interested in seeing where it goes. But nonetheless, love Atmos and um, have a ton of for respect sure, for it. For sure. Ryan, uh, as far as you, is, uh, you were concerned, is there anything you have coming up? Obviously, congratulations on the release of Orange Clip now yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and yep. stuff like that. Um, I'm Thank sure I'll, I'm sure a bunch of people. I'll leave a link in the description for it as well cool. uh, so people can actually uh, grab it. Um, uh, we the love it. Free 30-day trial. So There you go. Go ahead. Good. Ooh, that's a good one. That. That's when you know you try. you like, bro, look, you could go try it out. I, Satisfaction. Because yeah, then yeah. you know when, when they go back to a session and that trial is up, they're like, dang. Yeah. <laughs> 30 days is nice, though. 30 I mean, days, yeah. 30 yeah. Days. Really, that's really, really, yeah. yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, yeah. I mean, people make music slowly over time, and I just, right. I, whenever I got a plug in, I demoed it for like 10 days, you know, seven days, I was like, I had no idea whether I liked it yeah. or not. That's true. It takes time yeah. to yeah. really discover. Like, Gold, Gold Clip was a, Gold Clip for me was a slower, was a slow process as well. It's like, evolved a lot, too. It, 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 it yeah. has. And Clippers are a really big deal to me. Like, there's certain yeah. plugins, like, you know, that it's hard to, like, integrate. Like, yeah. a Clipper's like, okay, yeah. like, I'm going to keep trying you out and keep seeing yeah. what you work on and stuff like that. But it took me a little bit to figure out, like, oh, I understand the sound of this thing now. And then yeah. I started to kind of figure it out. My last question, because I really want to know this, yeah. uh, and then we'll just wrap things up. Where do you put or what do you put your gold clip on? Like, what instances do you put yeah. your gold clip on in mm. your sessions? In mastering, like, I usually have it before my analog chain if I'm using my analog chain, which is odd. So, I, like, the most, you know, it's emulating a, a, a converter, so you would think you would put it right before it comes back going into a final limiter. Mm -hmm. should go right before a final limiter, and that's probably, like, the most sensible place, uh -huh. putting it right before the final limiter. But I've been putting it, like, first in chain uh -huh. because I can monitor the input signal, and I can, like... If I'm mastering, one thing that I'll do is like since I'm in Pro Tools, I use the Gain Audio Suite plugin. Yeah, you know, in Audio Suite, and instead of like render, you can click Analyze. Uh -huh. And so if I have like a mix, and I can like analyze that mix, 
and it'll say the peaks are at like negative four, I'll just put the the input signal to positive four and right. then I'll gain length the input and output. So uh. it, I get zero dB of clipping, it's going right up to the clip point. And then when I use gold, it's gonna be super, super clean. Nice. And then I, I totally... have it on unison or whatever it's called. Yeah, unison. Right. What did I name it? Yeah, I think unison, <laughs> but whatever. And then I'll just like, I can, go through a record and I can change the amount of gold that I use on that record based gotcha. on like how squeezed and limited the actual mix is. Right. If it's an open mix, I'll yeah. use more gold. If it's a squeezed and limited mix, uh, I may dial that way back down because gotcha. it's dealing with like already hyper compressed signals. Stop. So it's not really going right. to change the decay of things because the decay of things is already like flatlined out or right. squeezed out. So right. gold won't really have as much benefit or a clipper. Right. And so then that way I'll have the clipper above it. Um, so usually it's like first and chain because then I can EQ afterwards. I can compress to make it pulse a little bit if I gotcha. want. I can like saturate. Um, I have this other plugin that I'm putting out after Orange Clip called High Fall, which is a high frequency acceleration limiter. It's mm. like a, it's like you, what they use to cut uh, vinyl. It's like a, um, a high frequency compressor that has variable attack and release based on the amount of gain reduction it's doing. Uh -huh. So if it's doing a lot of gain reduction, it's really, really fast. And if it's doing low gain reduction, it's slow. And then it has like a hold time to it. And so what that does is it like maintains the transient shape of high frequencies, right. but like puts a ceiling on them. So they still mm. got like, if you put a de on a record, it just Inter, you know, yeah, right. it just jumps down on everything. Yeah. But what this does is it lets things through, but it kind of puts a ceiling to the high frequencies. Interesting. And then I put all this extra stuff in it to make it like really useful for vocals. So you can like make vocals super bright with it. Like yeah, I right. put this mm -hmm. internal parallel processor on it. Uh -huh. It's going to go off. It's going to be, That's good. it's That's like nice. a mastering you know tool and a vocal process. Yeah. You know what that sounds like to me? You know what uh, that really sounds like to me? What? It sounds like an exclusive. Sounds like an audio nerd. Oh no, I knew, I knew what that was. <laughs> yes. it, it just, I already it sounded like it to me. I oh yeah, I for sure. Know. Did it sound like that to you? I, I'm just not even saying it. I just was like, ping, ping. I was like, Zaire, uh, right there. Um, that's our clip editor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm literally like, I'm rapping, but I'm asking you just as a fan, yeah, like yeah. for just as, as far as your products and stuff like that. Uh, the classic and modern. Yeah. On the bottom um, section, mm -hmm. where it's like. Kind of how things kind of, uh, I guess, the curve. Well, yeah, that yeah, curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two things that I notice about that. Yeah. Modern feels a little cleaner. It's way cleaner. Got you. It's yeah. a little bit cleaner in the yeah. sounds, but classic feels a little bit more kind of like rounder. Yeah. So what exactly. Is, what yeah, is got a good ear, yeah. Got you. What yeah. what's happening like with that? So modern is. You know, it's basically doing this gain and then uh, bending that gain to zero dB of gain as it gets to zero, you know, zero dB FS. So it's like adding gain and then it's slowly tapering off that gain. Right. With modern, it does less gain. Right? Uh -huh. It only does like up to two and a half dB. And the curve starts at like five and a half below zero. So it's like just the top end of the waveform. So it's pretty much linear up until negative 5.5. Right. And then it starts to curve it. And so it's just shaping like kind of the top end, almost like how Orange Clip at default does. Right, it's very right. similar, but it's a different, it's a completely different shape. Gotcha. Um, with classic, it's multiplicative, right? And so, like, if you're doing two dB a classic, the curve starts at four below. If you're doing like six dB a classic, the curve starts at twelve below uh -huh. zero. And so, the curve, the start of the curve changes based off of the dial. So, if you dial it up, the curve starts to go lower and lower. Gotcha. And so, it's basically like compression with like a longer knee. So, uh -huh. it's going to bring up lower level stuff and then it's going to kind of round it out over a longer dynamic period so if you have like a vocal that's moving up and down uh -huh. like you would use like um you know classic on that right my man uh with orange clip my man chris tabron was telling me that he's been putting orange clip on vocals yeah. just to like round them out because right. you know it's just like a trans in a way it's like a transient shaper you know right right um so yeah you can use I never really used wave shapers much until I started developing them. Right. You know? Yeah. But they're yeah. really powerful, interesting tools. Right. Um, right. So I, I I asked about that because that was the characteristics that I was noticing. And yeah. sometimes I'll wind up going to classic sometimes. Like Way I notice, more harmonic though. Yeah, yeah. Something about it just feels a little bit like for some reason things just feel a little bit wider and like the yeah. low mids, like things just kind of open up a bit. So yeah, yeah. like from a from a warm I hate, you know, we all hate that word, like from a yeah. warm standpoint, but sometimes modern, I'll be like, oh, but you're cleaner. And sometimes yeah. I'll fight between like, ah, oh, but you're so much cleaner, but you feel a little bigger. Last yeah, if you question. want to go like aggro with it, definitely go to classic. My one friend, uh, actually he's not 
too close to my friend, but an acquaintance, uh-huh. uh, John Costelli, he's, he puts gold clip on like reverb and delay returns mm. because <laughs> the gold processing is dual mono yeah. and those things are going to be stereo. And right. so when you like hype it up with like a lot of gold processing, it like accentuates the stereoness and he's, it just like kind of makes them come alive. It sounds wow, crazy. You should try good it. idea. Yeah. See? That's what you just I'm pull doing. the ceiling down all the way down to the reverb level right. and just like run run it hard through gold, put it on unison so it maintains the volume. Gotcha. Yeah. That part too. Crazy. Exactly. So it keeps yeah. it there. Oh, that's yeah. a good way to use a Unity button. Yeah. Um, so Unity yeah. lets you use gold either modern or classic as right. much as you want and right. it'll never change the perceived volume. Gotcha. Which you know, normally sense. you like want the change perceived volume because sure. it makes you because it's non-linear gain so it's not like it's not literally just turning it up it's actually reacting to the music so it right. is doing something novel but when you put it on unity if i have it at 6 dB of like classic, it's gonna go through that curve. As long as I have the signal going up to the clip point, it's gonna uh-huh. go through that curve and it's gonna do the dynamic effect. Right. But then it's just gonna turn it down by a static 6 dB Gotcha. Level. And so it'll turn out like to sound a little bit quieter and that's why you may like Prefer. opt to turn it off. Because right. you're like, oh, it could, but you, what you wanna listen to is the sustain of the sounds. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So when I master, I always keep it on because on one record, like I was saying earlier, like one record in a song or in an LP, one song and an LP, I'll try to, I'll use more gold or less gold, but if I have unison on, it's not going to uh, change the volume. From gotcha. Track. It's just going to just affect the the sound, like the sonics, and that's it. Exactly. Not full the dynamic shape and stuff like that. Yeah. Got you. You had something? Oh no. I was, hey. Cool. No audio. This don't have nothing to do with audio, bro. I like to watch, man. Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, he, t- he took your chain too. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, you know, Ryan, just. Thank you so much for Thank just you, giving right. us your time and stuff like that. Yeah. And also, you know, just for supporting us, you know what I mean? And yeah. stuff like that and for everything <laughs> you do and stuff like that. It, it just, we really yes. appreciate when people take us seriously as, yeah, well, as sure. well with this platform and stuff. And um, yeah, I can't wait for people just to see this and Absolutely. clip it up and, yeah, you know, yeah. put this out there and stuff like that. And um, yeah, Double man, just time, clip it up. Oh, Ooh. On, <laughs> Yo, you rap. You rap. Um, but no, you know, congratulations on the, obviously Absolutely. the plug-in release. Thank um, you. I know it's going to be widely uh, used and successful and oh stuff like God. that. And um, yeah, and then, you know, obviously congrats also on Gold Clip. You know, there's very few plugins that cut through that become standards. Yeah. And yeah. I think you have one of those plugins. Thank you. Uh, for thank sure. You. But well, um, I love what y'all are doing here. And it's, thank you. It's yeah. wonderful to be here. So I appreciate y'all having No me. doubt. You, I appreciate you. Um, so this has been the My Audio Nerds Podcast, podcast for audio nerds for like yourself. Sure. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, one lucky person is going to win that VIP Gold Edition Rosetta EQ or yes. a compressor. Uh, also, you can become a member of this podcast to get exclusive episodes, uh, even money in our store, and a bunch of bells and whistles. For instance, the people watching this episode, uh, our members, Ben saw it. They saw it before everyone else. Yeah, uh, Ryan, again, we appreciate you, man. I and you, um, Where can we find you? Yeah, that part. You, I'm right here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, no, man. I'm I mean, in real life. My, SchwabDigital.com is my yeah. plug-in company, and RyanSchwab.com is where I run all my music work through. Cool. So, and Say you can less. find me in West Philly. Got That's you. West Philly. West facts. Philly. I'll leave the uh, link in the description yeah, for that. West Philadelphia. No, don't do that. Oh, my God. I was like, you know, Philly people hate that, right? Like, <laughs> no. Oh, my God. West Amen. Philly, you know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you got anything? You for, oh, I, hey. The new AI heat map on the way. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Yeah. Y'all gonna wait for that until like, like y'all, y'all, y'all in y'all seven. That's wild. Hey, man, you good? You good oh, to yeah, go? I'm chilling over here. All right, it's my audio nurse podcast. Peace, y'all. Peace.